Hi, everybody! And welcome to the third part of my four-part Mega Campaign series here on YouTube. And let's just get right into the into this one, huh? And this is the map that we got that I converted over from Europe Universe LS4. I might notice that I have a little bit of contempt in my voice. And look, just look at the flag I got, man. They gave me the PayPal flag. My good flag is gone. The good flag. Okay, so before we continue, I'm going to need you guys to trust me when I say this. That population is very, very important to Victoria 2. So, here's the population of Denmark Frisia at the beginning. It's not that bad, right? Especially when compared to Pomerania and Bulgaria. But then you look at Britain and France and then Russia and Italy. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Hold up. Did you see that? Now this is huge. This is mass this is really big for us like even bigger than your mom big which is like massive now this is very important for us because if you haven't noticed from my europa game i'm planning on forming scandinavia in in victoria too russia was the big stopgap to that but now that russia is only partially westernized i can go in and easily defeat their armies with no problem so the plan for the war here is just to take their capital st petersburg and hold it Meaning that we can just wait for the war ticker to go up before we can force peace them out. As you can see in this clip, I'm trying to propose peace to the Russians, but you know, the box is grayed out and I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. And then I realized that the Chinese Ming Empire became the war leaders, meaning that this war is just going to be prolonged. China will grow larger. <laughs> And so with our victory over the Chinese and Russians, I was now able to form the Scandinavian Empire, which also might make you think, you know, why Scandinavia never formed in real life? I mean, like, it's a pretty fucking cool thing. It also kind of makes sense, too. And then you just take a quick look at, you know, how many wars Denmark and Sweden fought against each other alone. And then, you know, put, things are put into context. For some reason, I was able to colonize the western coast of Africa. Now, I don't think this is something I should be able to do at this point, but it's what I would do for the beginning of the game. While I was colonizing and just in general nation building, Russia decided to declare a war on me, which we would need to call an ambulance for. Hey, old man, give me everything. Oh, oh, call an ambulance, call an ambulance, but not for me. This war really did catch me by surprise because I really didn't expect a partially westernized nation to attack me, but I would make full use of this because my ally Bulgaria was also called in, so Russia was actually fighting a two-front war this time around. Because Russia even dared to declare war on me, I well, I decided to punish Russia majorly here. I didn't want them coming back to be a reoccurring thing, so I just liberated the Baltic provinces and gave a province to Bulgaria. Bro, you haven't even been independent for a year, man. Calm down. Now, I actually got this event where I would have been able to go to war with Arabia, but with the power of Captain Hindsight, I could say I probably should have done that instead of just back you know, back the way. I then decided to move my armies down to the French border because I kind of really wanted the Port of Calais back. While strategizing the best way to fuck over the French, I got an interesting crisis event happening where I was able to release the Byzantine Empire from the Russian Empire and the borders look absolutely horrid. So this next clip is just to show you why I don't use audio from my recordings. I'm in prison in real life, Morty. I need you to break me out, Rick. Please, Rick. I'm a real being and break me out, Rick. I was just about to go to war for the southern tip of India when I thought, hold up, let them cook. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take a hard pass on this one, though. Hey, good luck, man. You all to heck. 
Leaving that trauma for my therapist on Thursday, I go to war for the southern tip of India finally, and because they're an uncivilized nation... Job done. And before I make my way back to Europe, make a quick pit stop in Swahili to clean up my borders in Africa. <laughs> yeah, okay, never mind, we're fine. Nothing came of it. I don't know why France will go to war with Russia except to, like, make up for Napoleon, but... Why? Why would you do this? And the borders look even worse now! After seeing such horrid borders, I do what any map painter in any Paradox game does. I take a nice vacation to Cambodia and, uh, take half of it for myself. Unbeknownst to me, both France and I gained the ability to colonize Africa. Now, I, France has probably been colonizing for a while now without me realizing, but I managed to catch it pretty early on, so it wasn't that bad. I noticed that Italy was expanding in West Africa, and I could not allow them to become any more powerful, because they're already pretty powerful. So I expanded myself in West Africa to stop their claims. Some rebels, huh? I'm sure it'll be no problem for me to do. I forgot about India. These borders look absolutely fantastic, especially by the standards of Paradox Mega Campaigns. So this is very, very good, especially for me, a map painter. I just wanted to point this out. I went to war with the Nam to take all of Cambodia's land, so I took two provinces up top. Because I always plan on attacking Cambodia proper, you know, finish them off, but it never will. Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Please help me. As a student of history, I released Indochina to hopefully avoid future conflicts. Now we are starting to reach the end game of Victoria too. You can tell this because Britain and France, two great powers, are at war with each other and France is winning pretty handily. Finally, this is what I've been waiting for, the Great War to be discovered. Now, when two great powers go to war with each other, and hopefully I'll be included, it will cause a great war. A perfect way to end my Victoria 2 campaign, and a more even perfecter segue, because perfecter isn't even a word, but a perfecter way to set up for Hearts of Iron 4. And I was all set, it was going to be me and Bulgaria versus France and Pomerania. A pretty even match, if I do say so myself. But a wrench was thrown in that plan. France went to war with Pomerania. I told you to stay outside. I am outside. Oh, no. Gentlemen. No. No. And then to make all of this worse, my ally for this entire game, Bulgaria, decided to join the French side. In order to mend my broken heart, I make an alliance with an old friend. I make an alliance with Pomerania. Friendship ended with Bulgaria. Now Pomerania is my best friend. But wait! There's more! Yes, that's right. I was finally able to get Britain as my ally, which is something I was actually trying to do for a while. Now this would be massive as it would firmly tip the scales in our favor. Due to France being embroiled in so many wars up to this point, they had their army spending cut in half, meaning for at least the onset of it, we're gonna have a pretty easy time of it. While the European front is looking real good, and I actually kind of regret calling Britain in, our African front, on the other hand, wasn't doing so well. When we gain initial victories in the first battles, and even in a few follow-up battles, quickly attrition set in, and we are actually on the retreat from the French. But another front that was going very well at the time was the Baltic Front, as any French troops that were in the area, we were able to quickly defeat. And unlike in Africa, we were actually able to reinforce our troops to make sure that they stay defeated and we don't give them a chance to recover. On the main front, it would actually be kind of boring, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, we would just sweep through the French, they were completely unprepared. The British just kept assaulting madly, the French couldn't keep up, and... We would just win on all accounts there. 
in Africa, we would finally gain an important victory as we would defeat the French at Springbrook, allowing us to attack in Africa rather than just be on the defensive. The French ally Nav actually had a navy three times larger than my own. So, in a last desperate attempt, they attack my own fleet. Thankfully, my fleet was made up of ironclad ships. Theirs were mostly probably came from the transfer from Europa, so it was a easy victory, and we got a lot of their ships sunk. Meanwhile... And with the defeat of the Navarre Navy, we would end the Great War, and these turns would be very, very harsh against the French. For ourselves, we'll get Picardy, our ally, the United Baltic Provinces, would reclaim their land, and Britain would just get some colonies in Asia. And that will be it for my Victoria 2 campaign. Uh, I will stay and play a little bit more. That's mainly getting my Navy ready for Hearts Byron. I want to see how the French battle royale will play out, communist, fascist, anarcho-liberals, they're all going at each other. I want to see, you know, something interesting happen from that. Bavaria does invade France, I'll be showing that right now. And, uh, yeah. Thank you all for watching, I really do appreciate it. Uh, please leave a comment down below, help out with the algorithm, and, uh, leave a like. And, uh, stay tuned next week for the final part, Hearts of Iron 4, get ready for it.